Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ulan Gaming, and I am bringing you today another in-depth strategy guide. Uh, this is my second one, this time covering my greedy Aztec Eagle Runner Fast Fortress build. I was so happy to see the positive reception on my previous video regarding USA Marines, uh, especially since that effort uh, because that one required just a lot of effort to make, and it makes me smile to see you guys enjoying my content, as it makes me feel like that hard work was worth it. So, uh, we're doing it again. I'll be doing an in-depth guide on another strategy I am well known for among my Discord community, delving into how and why each step is done, and packing as much detail as I can in this video. With that out of the way, let's jump right into it. In the strategy, we will be defending our base with minimal resources while being greedy, and eventually training our primary unit composition of Arrow Knights and Eagle Runners. While this strategy is usable to an extent in 1v1, where this strategy really shines is in team games, as you will commonly find your army being the primary threat on the map and keep enemies deadlocked against you, allowing your teammates to bring in the final blow. This strategy is very aggro once it gets going, and you will be the center of attention for the entirety of the game once it takes off. The game footage you are seeing in the background is actually footage from an older video on my channel in which I used the strategy and good micro to keep a player deadlocked with me in a team game for the entire game, despite him both being rank 41 on the team ladder and using a skirmisher type unit who had multipliers against eagle runners. Also, funny detail, I found like 5 treasures of explore hit points in this game and got them up to over 7,000 HP while doing the explore HP dance in the 4th age. But yeah, this strategy is very much so the aggro, be the big bad guy who the enemies have to pay attention to and focus on to help support your teammates so that they can go in and bring in the final blow. Uh, you're not going to be raiding very much with the strategy, it's very much so your job to be the ever persistent threat in the middle of the map that prevents them from doing any- that, that, that prevents them from doing anything. To start in Age 1, gather your first food crate and queue your first vill. As soon as that settler is queued, move at least three vills over to the wood crates while one goes to herd. Uh, this is because we don't need the second villager queued until the first one is about to pop at the- uh, it, it is about to pop. Uh, but we do need 100 wood as fast as humanly possible so that we can make a community plaza and set our warrior priest to it. Um, that way we are saving ourselves, you know, like five- five seconds maybe. And, uh, it's really these little shifts in how you think and play, where you shave off two seconds here, and three seconds there, and five seconds over there, that really make a big impact in the outcome of your games. Uh, as the, those two, three, five seconds make a huge difference when that means you're attacking two, three, five seconds before your enemy, uh, but, but or earlier, you know, potentially making your enemy be, have a unit shipment that comes in late, or potentially catching, uh, the, uh catching their settlers before they can gather a 700 coin ship and because it arrived five seconds too late. Uh, people really forget that these games are as much a race as they are tactical. As soon as you have 100 wood, make your community plaza and set the warrior priest to it. He generates 1 XP per second while dancing, which is roughly the value of a trade post, only half the cost and in your base and therefore much harder to burn down. Uh, the reason the warrior priests are so powerful is because of this fact and because you can have up to 10 of them giving you the safe XP generation of 10 trade posts. Uh, this, in combination with the Aztec Warchief, which, or, which uh, it has an aura that doubles XP gain, and in fact triples it after a cheap big button, uh, this makes the Aztecs the unchallenged kings of XP gain and sending shipments. In long games as Aztec, you will f commonly find yourself running out of cards, as the XP gain, other dances at the plaza, and your explorer is what the Aztec civilization itself is based around and relies in order to win. Uh, the Aztecs are very much so a shipment-based civilization. So, now that you have your warrior priest built, collect the rest of your crates and set everybody to food, starting to focus on age up. Uh, we're also going to use the rest of our wood to construct two houses. Uh, and construct them quickly so that we can use the, the XP from, the from building the houses to send our, our first shipment that little bit faster. Uh, speaking of, it's time to send our first card, three villagers. 
Uh, we will be going for a greedy 15 villager age up with the Aztecs in this build order, and that is because we need to, as Eagle Runner Knights require a lot of resources in order to field, costing 75 food and 75 coin. We'll talk more about the Eagle Runner Knight itself later, and why we are using it. Uh, before we age up, however, we need to do one more thing, and that is send Kalmakak. But we need to time Kalmakak very carefully. Uh, so what Kalmakak does is it ships a warrior priests and a warrior priest and then halves our next or current age up time, and it arrives in 40 seconds. It's a very good card that sees very common use for Aztecs. However, we need to be careful with this card as we don't want it to arrive too early. We want to get the card in as fast as possible for the XP the Warrior Priest provides, but we also have the objective in this build order of having the fast age up apply to our third uh, 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 apply to our age up to age three rather than our age up to age two. Uh, therefore, what we are going to do is send this card once we have 750 food, and then start aging up with the messenger for a fast age up as soon as we hit 800. Uh, the messenger makes you age up in 30 seconds, and because our shipment takes 40 seconds to arrive and we sent it right at about 750 food, our shipment is going to arrive about 5 to 10 seconds uh, after hitting age 2, giving us the earliest possible XP gain while also saving our second fast age up for age 3 instead of age 2. During transition, set 4 villagers to coin. Uh, they need to gather 400 uh, to combine with our 600 coin later for aging to 3. Uh, do not set anybody to wood. Set your other 11 villagers of your 15 to food, and put all new ones from the town center to food as well. Congratulations! You hit age 2, and despite waiting until you had 15 whole vills before you started, uh, you still ride faster than anybody else. And everyone is going to see your age of time and your civilization, and immediately assume you're rushing. Uh, this is to our benefit, and it's one of the reasons I love fast fortressing as Aztecs. People are so concerned about defending their base from uh, from the impending rush that doesn't come when you play as Aztecs, and they they leave Aztec players like me and you completely free to uh, to set up our actual fast fortress strategy and then fuck them over. And then by the time they realize it, it's already too late. Uh, we'll be in age two for a little bit, making vills and getting ready to age up. Uh, this process will feel slow, and you will feel behind, but this is actually not because you're slow and behind, but it's a product of you hitting age 2 so fast. Uh, it, it, in reality, we're going to be clicking up at around the 6 minute 30, 6 minute 40 second, but you arrived at age 2 so fast, you feel like you're in age 2 forever and you're falling behind. It's just actually not the case. Uh, it's a tricky mindset. Uh, we are going to, uh, as soon as you hit age 2, you're going to be sending your 600 coin, uh, and we're going to be aging up to age 3 uh, with around 21 to 23 villagers. Uh, that kind of stuff is very much so just standard fast fortress play. Just get to age 2, get your resources, get to age 3. Uh, now the more ast astute of you will have noticed a distinct lack of any cards mentioned other than 600 coin, and that is because we aren't sending any other cards in age 2. Uh, normally, a Warrior Priest boom, considered widely as the greediest Aztec strat already, involves sending three Warrior Priests and then dancing with them uh, dancing with them and your Vills to make more Warrior Priests until you have ten. However, we will not be doing this, largely because we need to be in H3 to make Eagle Runners our primary military unit. Uh, we don't even have the card in the deck. Uh, the deck is right here. Uh, we will instead be getting 10 Warrior Priests through another method and another card to be discussed later. Our deck is mostly upgrades and economic cards. It can almost be mistaken for a treaty deck, if not for the H2 unit shipments there as a panic button in case you need to do an emergency abort. But do not be deceived. We are very likely to completely clean out our H3 shipments in this build order and send every single one of them. Often, the biggest reason I end up going to H4 at this build is simply because I've run out of H3 shipments and need to move up so I can get the better stuff. Uh, for now, though, we will be aging up with the Elder for two Noble Hut Travois and a 10% boost to their stats. This will allow us to immediately start training units much quicker, as we will not have to rely on the very slow construction time of villagers, as War Huts and Noble Huts take as long to construct as outposts and can only be built by four at a time. Now, during transition, Set four bills to wood and arrange your food and coin gatherers so that they're about even, with uh, one more on coin than food uh, if you have an odd number of villagers, likely resulting in eight on food and nine on coin. 
Uh, now, I would like to discuss this build's economy uh, and how I have mathed everything out. Eagle Runners cost 75 food and coins to produce and take 25 seconds to train. A constant production of full batches requires 375 food and 375 coin every 25 seconds, which is a tall ask this early in the game. Uh, after calculations and testing, this can be achieved with 13 villagers on a coin mine and 12 on hunts. We also need to have constant villager production, which is obviously non-negotiable. Having six vills on food will take care of this. In order to maintain enough housing for both our settlers and our military, we need to have four on wood and be making houses constantly whenever we reach 100 wood. Therefore, our first objective with our economy is to reach 10 warrior priests, 18 villagers gathering food, 4 on wood, and 13 on coin, totaling 35 villagers. After this is attained, we will need more villagers on coin to get a surplus needed for the support cards for both Eagle Runners and Arrow Knights. Uh, and then you can focus on getting more wood and food for upgrades, a market, and eventually going to age 4. Uh, but our objective, our primary objective, is 18 on food, 4 on wood, and 13 on coin. Now, ensure you have villagers queued, continue to take treasures with your explorer during transition, and plan where you're going to put your noble huts uh, during transition. I have placed noble huts in my own base at two separate forward parts of the map, uh, or even right behind my opponent's town center uh, while he's being rushed and needs assistance. It's important that you adapt your placement of your noble huts to the match, and you need to decide quickly where you are needed most and where it will be most beneficial to be able to train military. Uh, when you're in age three, your noble huts, uh, get your noble huts where they need to be and get them built quickly. Additionally, the second you hit age three, we need to send our next card with zero delay. And that card is Five Warrior Priests. Five Warrior Priests, an often overlooked card to, uh, added to the Aztec repertoire, uh, is a fantastic card that allows fast fortress build orders like this to still have a Warrior Priest boom, and is severely underappreciated, a severely underappreciated addition to the Definitive Edition Aztec. Uh, this card single-handedly allows us to be greedy with the fast fortress, and not necessarily be forced into H2 play if we want to do a Warrior Priest boom. Uh, these five, combined with Kalmakak and the Warrior Priest we start with, results in seven Priests total. Uh, keep them on XP until we can send our next card eight Villagers, uh, and then set them to Warrior Priest production until, you've until you attain your ten Warrior Priests, which should only be about a, a minute and a half, since you only need to make three more. Originally, this build order started with sending six Eagle Runner Knights first and then Villagers afterwards. Combining this with the five, we train right away for a total of 11 eagles rather quickly in age three. Uh, unfortunately, while this does allow your mass to get started, the delay of the eight villager shipment really hurts this strategy a lot, and I have found in all of my games that it is much better and more consistent to get the warrior priests and then the villagers so we can get our economy to the stable 35 villagers we need. As a result, I ended up removing the six warrior, uh, eagle runner card from my deck. Uh, but I still keep, I, I still do keep, however, the seven Arrow Knight card, as it is very, very valuable for getting Arrow Knights uh, quickly if you need to deal with cannons or just need you want to start pushing and sieging down buildings from afar. Uh, now, when your uh, when your eight villagers arrive, this uh, yeah, set them all to food. Uh, this should result in you getting enough villagers to meet our threshold and start transitioning new villagers to coin. Uh, from here, we've met two of our thresholds. We'll have. 18, 19, 20 on food, and we will have four on wood, which means coin will be the only one that needs to catch up uh, with villagers. We are very close to our economy already, and we are like eight and a half minutes into the game. Uh, you'll have enough coin stockpiled from the transition from two to three that you're able to, uh, to, to train batches of Eagle Runner Knights with just your nine on coin without too much issue. Uh, you'll notice pretty much right away, as soon as your eight villagers arrived, your entire economy will stabilize and your military will start to build up at a rapid pace. And so we're going to start using our military now. Uh, now use clever, uh, using clever micro and use of your explorer and the absolute abuse of the healing dance and standard ground mode, uh, to, this will allow you to prevent your units from dying. I have an entire video dedicated to using this micro trick, but the gist of it is that if your explorer is between the uh, your army and the opponents, and he's in standard ground mode while the warrior priests are on the healing dance, he will soak up enemy fire and often heal faster than they can damage him. 
Uh, thus, your opponent is forced to either kill the explorer by forcing him to melee or out damaging the heal, which takes time, or focus fire your eagle runners one at a time, while your eagle runners have free reign to unleash their entire DPS against the opponent without having to single targets out. Uh, additionally, after bouts, placing your eagles in standard ground mode will allow you to heal them up very quickly, uh, even if they're near enemy buildings or anything like that. Uh, doing these tricks will result in you having a ludicrously good kill-death ratio in like every single game you play with this strategy. Uh, I often have three to four times uh, the kills-to-death ratio in any game that I win, and probably two to three times uh, my kills-to-death in games I lose. In, in games I lose. I think one time I had um, 143 kills to uh, 19 deaths in one game. Uh, it's just absolutely ludicrous what you can do if you micro well with Aztecs. Uh, this will also cause you to keep up and often be ahead of the European civs in score throughout a lot of the game. And as a native civ, that means a lot because uh, a lot of people will just quit right then and there when they see the score difference. Uh, keep fighting and sending cards. Send your night combat first, uh, and then smoking mirror second, and then the rest of your shipments at your leisure whenever you feel like it. Uh, with all the night cards shipped, your eagle runners will have more HP and attack than if they simply have their guard upgrades. That's pretty crazy. Uh, additionally, they also have the range upgrade card. On that topic, let's talk about eagle runners and why they are so good. Eagle runners are the Aztec equivalent of dragoons. They move fast and counter cavalry from range but with a few important differences. Eagle Runners only take up one population, but have more damage than a full two-population Dragoon. Uh, they have 15 attack at 1.5 speed, in other words, a standard damage output at 30. Uh, but because it's at 1.5 speed and has a faster rate of fire, that makes them much easier to micro and much less likely to overkill. Uh, it, this gives them an insanely large amount of DPS uh, that is unlike anything in the game as soon as they get upgraded. Uh, combining all the combat cards, they get a total of 30% HP and damage from the combat cards in the Third Age. And then the War Dance on top of it with 10 Warrior Priests boosts their attack by about 25% as an aura. Uh, and then you can boost their range from 12 to 16 through a 500 coin support shipment. And all of this makes their damage output one of the most insane things in the game. Uh, they scale incredibly well because they start out with Age 3 stats as their base meaning upgrades do more than them than if they scaled off of smaller stats, a, a smaller H2 stats, like skirmishers do. Their base HP is 180, the same base HP as a veteran musketeer. And on top of that, they maintain a 30% range resistance, among the absolute highest in the Dragoon class, as most Dragoons have only 20 or even 10%. At 6 movement speed, they aren't as fast as real Dragoons, but more than fast enough to do the job. They are treated just like Dragoons in tags as well, uh, their tags are a little bit iffy, uh, and, and sometimes incorrect or deceiving, but essentially you can just treat them like Dragoons. Uh, they don't get multiplied against can- uh, they don't get multiplied by cannons, and despite having a quote-unquote shock infantry tag, they don't get multiplied by Dragoons either. Uh, they get multiplied by hand infantry that has multipliers against cavalry and skirmishers. Uh, but their damage output is so good that if you outmass your opponent or are simply clever about your explorer micro, you can beat or at least even stand your, on even ground against a direct counter with these units. Uh, their biggest weakness by far is the very large cost associated with them. 150 resources per unit is not as much as cavalry, but because they are only one population, this makes them much harder to mass unless you plan out your economy extensively to accommodate them which is the entire purpose of this strategy. It's always an absolute joy to see your opponent spam skirmishers and still lose. Uh, as you know, mentally, they are thinking, Shit! Now, when you're ready to start pushing, instead of just holding the enemy back, ship 7 Aeronites and train 5 from the Noble Hut for 12 total. This gives you enough range and damage to quickly dispatch of cannons and forward barracks from afar. From here, make sure you always have around at least 15 Aeronites at all times. Uh, this is what really pushes your military over the edge, as these units are incredible. Uh, as when they start sieging at 30 range, they force your opponent to choose between giving up the building or going into combat with your army. 
Aeronites allow you to force engagements, just like mortars, but are more mobile and not useless in combat like mortars are. Uh, and they also double as your anti-artillery, so there's that as well. Now, make sure uh, after a while you ship the support cards, giving your eagles more range, I did mention that before, and, your air and the support cards make your Aeronites do more damage. Additionally, you want the market upgrades and the Aztec mining card. Uh, the Aztec mining card is a massive 40% gather rate to coin. Uh, and, more importantly, it allows you to train Coyote Runners to mix into your army as well, without having to change your economy in the slightest. Now, it is worth noting that while I always send the Aztec Mining card late in Age 3, uh, for the Gather Boost, I rarely find myself training the Runners, as they just aren't as efficient or as carded as the Eagles are. But they are useful for raiding and distractions, and I do find myself occasionally training them, so uh, it, it is still worth it, in my opinion. Now, it's important with the strategy that you have very good communication with your teammates. This build has lots of aggro, and you will quickly become one of the most focused entities on the battlefield. It's extremely likely that two or even all of your opponents will mass skirmishers to deal with your army. If you suspect or see signs of this happening, it's important to let your teammates know to build, a cal to build cavalry and artillery to deal with the coming mass. Your units can easily contend with and beat an equally sized army of skirmishers, assuming your microbe is on point, but you will struggle against multiple people using skirmishers. Uh, this strategy is so aggro and such a big concern that after a point in the game, your army will be the crux of the team's force and everybody's troops will exist to deal with the counters to eagle runners because their DPS is, because their DPS is so high and they are that worth it. Always remember to keep your community plaza on a hotkey so you can rapidly switch between XP gain, healing dance, chief dance uh, to revive or boost your explorer's tankiness, war dance to boost your military's damage by ludicrous amounts, and even fertility dance to boom with villagers in downtime. I legit use all of these dances in conjunction with each other in every single game with Aztecs, and it's important that you learn quickly to switch on a dime in order to maximize your unit's effectiveness. Aztec is based around your micro, uh, it is based around your micro with the community plaza, especially in the late game. And if you can't figure that out and get on that, then you will fall behind and fail as, as an Aztec player. Uh, now, when you hit age 4, eventually, way late down the line when you find yourself having no shipments left and a ton of spare resources, uh, send the support card for Janie the Pet Jaguars. Uh, most people overlook this card and instead go for the Skull Knights. However, I am not personally a fan of that card unless you are specifically doing a Skull Knight Fast Industrial, as Skull Knights can only be easily massed from your community plaza, and as explained above, uh, as, as explained previously, your plaza will be busy the entire game with this strategy, macroing and microing the entire fight to keep you alive, uh, because the plaza is so central to the Aztec playstyle, uh, to the Aztec Eagle Runner Knight playstyle. As such, the often overlooked Jaguar card is actually the much better pick, as it allows you to maintain 12 Shadow Tech Jaguars with a 30%, 35% extra HP and damage buff. Uh, these Shadow Tech Jaguars are faster than Skull Knights and cost zero population. They also train very quickly and train from your Explorer right on the front lines, and also have no tags except for pet. So nothing gets multipliers against them except like hack pellets, which are not exactly the first pick for a Sweden player. Uh, you can essentially treat them as cheap, quickly training, and very disposable substitute for cavalry and charge them into enemy skirms to occupy them, and then keep doing it again and again and again. I promise if you pay attention to them, Janies will serve you much better than Skull Knights will uh, in the long run, especially with these long protracted games like this, like, like this strategy uh, tends to encourage. When it's time to transition to farms and estates, I've got good news, and that, as and that is that Aztec have some of the best farms and estates in the game, and this deck has most of the cards for said buildings, so you will have absolutely no issues transitioning, uh, as long as you just as long as you get the XP you need to send your cards. I really can't think of too much else to say about this strat, so I think I'll end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new about this video. If you would like to see the footage of the game in the background completely uncut, 
uh, I will leave the video to that linked in the description below. And if you would like more in-depth detail on how to micro uh, your Aztec Explorer specifically, but also a little bit of your Eagle Runner Knights, I will also link uh, my, my Aztec Explorer micro video down below as well. It really is one of my absolute favorite videos that I have ever made. Uh, please like and uh, the video and subscribe to the channel uh, if you want more. And tell me what you guys want to see more of. I have plenty of... I, I have a pretty crazy video planned just to, uh, to go out soon that I'm really excited about. Uh, but if you guys want to know more about some of my strats, just ask. I'm more than willing to share my strategies and help the community understand my weird-ass build orders that I love making. And, why, and my thought process on why things are done. Uh, have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was, as ever, a ton of fun to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And have a great day.